So speaking with Tracy Van Slyke, project director for the Media Consortium, which is a network of the country's leading progressive and independent media outlets. And you talk a lot about why media isn't doing a good job, but are the things that are being done the right way? Oh, absolutely. Um, not only am I director of the Media Consortium, I'm also co-author of a book called Beyond the Echo Chamber, which actually lays out the strategies and successes of progressive media over the last couple years, um, ranging from organizations like Talking Points Memo to Brave New Films to Fire Dog Lake to um, areas like the black blogosphere and the feminist blogosphere. So there's lots of successes, which I'm happy to go through. <laughs> well, so in the book you mentioned networked progressive media. Yeah. What, what does that mean? So right now when we're, we're, we often live in what we call the echo chamber where we're heating, hearing the same messages repeated by Fox News and Rush Limbaugh and by the same politicians. Um, the the network power media system actually upends the echo chamber and allows everyday independent media, um, everyday citizens to work together, network together through online and offline means to create stories and drive them into the mainstream dialogue. And is that necessary because progressives aren't as good as conservatives at doing at getting those messages across or is it just the type of thing that you think would make it all the more effective or, or how did you come up um, with that? It's both. One is um, you know the mainstream media had sort of kept sort of a lockdown on deciding they're the elites that can decide what are the stories um, and what are the messages that should be driven out um, into the mainstream public dialogue. So one is how do we break through that and new technology allows us to do that um, and new ways of connecting with each other. At the same time the right has really built a s uh, strong right wing noise machine over the last 30 years and we have to figure out and that's what we talk about in the book about what is a sort of corresponding progressive infrastructure and we don't want the same sort of top-down manner. We want a different um, infrastructure. Why has the conventional wisdom been for a while that on talk radio, conservatives are much better, and on blogs and internet, progressives are better? I mean, how did that originally shape out that way? And it, do you even think it still is true? It actually, it's like factually, literally true in the sense of the right recognized, you know, a couple decades ago, sort of um, the opportunities to reach people in rural um, areas through radio. It was one of the few ways they could sort of penetrate those communities. Um, so they do dominate. They've had that sort of um, experience over the last you know, couple of decades. So you don't necessarily think there's anything about talk radio and conservative messages that makes it work that much better? Well, it's just I mean, been I think the history. You, I mean, I think there's history, and I also think they sort of perfected fear mongering hmm. um, in a way that um, reaches into people's sort of base core emotions, fear. Um, does that. You, will, you know, what progressives can do, I think, is sort of corresponding is uh, laughter. How do we make people laugh? How do we make people sort of connect with each other in a different sort of way? So is that infotainment? No, I think you can convey information in a way that's both serious, but... Um, but in a way that isn't always wanting to like beat you over the head <laughs> and make you want to cry. How is it going to uh, you know stir up your emotions uh, is an important thing. And the blogosphere really was able to uh, sort of the progressive blogosphere was really able to grow because um, I I in sort of contrast to the right wing talk radio where j they just talk at you, the blogosphere allows you to talk with each other and talk with actual the bloggers. Those relationships are developed. And there's been recent studies showing that because of those relationships that the progressive blogosphere has taken, they've been able to raise more money than the right. They've been able to drive more people to action. And that comes back to the network powered media system that we talk about in Beyond the Echo Chamber is those powers and relationships and networks can can drive change in action. So to remind you, we're speaking with Tracy Van Slyke, a co-author of the upcoming book, Beyond the Echo Chamber, Reshaping Politics Through Networked Progressive Media. Where do you think journalism is going to go, specifically as it comes to affecting elections in the next, I don't know, four to six years? Um, well, I think we're going to see a lot of things. One, we're going to see uh, a lot more individuals getting into sort of the media process um, through blogs, through internet radio and what have you, which is awesome. We're going to see probably the mainstream media as sort of they constrict in their journalism continuing to focus more and more on the horse race issue um, versus the actual issues. Um, so that's where we're really going to need progressive media, um, Twitter, Facebook, 
everyday people participating and really getting into the issues and helping spread that information, do that journalism. So we're going to have to take on the role uh, of mainstream media a lot more. What's your thought on the media coverage of the BP oil spill? I mean, it was amazing that it took, what was it, cl over 20 days to even get any video of, of what was going on. Yeah. The video immediately made it clear that 5,000 uh, barrels a day was not the right number. I yeah, mean, even yeah. a five-year-old kid could tell yeah. uh, that that wasn't the right number. What's kind of been your thought of how well, that's Well, I mean, the most striking thing to me, I don't know if you or your audience has been following Mac McClelland from Mother Jones. Um, she went down there to cover the... Um, she was down there for another reason, but ended up covering this bill. And over and over again, she's been told by BP that she can't get anywhere to actually do coverage. And that started a it's whole... It's amazing, isn't it, that BP is deciding oh, where people can go, ridiculous. what waters people have access to. You know, I mean, it makes me, you know, I'm sure it makes a lot of people question when Obama says, President Obama says that he's in charge. And that he has his foot on the throat, it, I think, yes, was it? Yes, yes. Um, I would like to hope that he is, but when BP is deciding who has access to our, our land... Um, we have a problem <laughs> and, and to a story that's affecting millions of people in our, you know, environmental future. Midweek Politics is brought to you in part by Jackson and Connor, classically modern men's apparel in Northampton, Massachusetts, on the second floor of Thorns Marketplace by DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. And by Shentrition.com, provider of all natural superfood and adaptogenic herbal blend at Shentrition.com. To find out more about underwriting midweek politics, visit midweekpolitics.com.